Two minutes till they open the doors, and this is our line. Good job, Los Angeles. I got one thing to say. What do we got? I gotta say, Lord Windermere's father was a crawdad. You got it. <laughs> you are Steve Campbell. Hi, Eric. Very nice to meet you. It's Steve. a pleasure. Look what I have for you. There you are, sir. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for getting the line. Back. You even wrote it down. I wrote. I wasn't gonna miss it. <laughs> it's a good pleasure. luck with this line. It'll go for you. and on FPTV about the all the tools and I'm holding one in my hand. I'm holding Come in a little closer. Let's take a break real quick so you know what the camera is. And tell us about these pens. Well, the Lolly 2s are a little bit of a departure for the Lolly 1s. We use the same shape as you can see, but we've changed out the engraving. The engraving underneath is, isn't polished. We decided to burnish it. So, so now besides the sharp edges which reflect the light, would we call it a matte finish underneath? Yeah, I call it a matte finish. To reflect the light differently, the matte finish gives it a whole different look from our lolly ones. And the red one's my favorite. I mean, I, I, me, me too. This and this clear one. The clear one the really clear one jumped out at me. Actually, they're so all scarlet ocean. Absolutely and, beautiful. I'll just take one of each. Other. Okay, but that's fine. Okay. We, we can do that. Scarlet ocean and crystal. Now the the clear is a departure. This is the first time we've used clear and in ever. Ever. Yeah, first ever. time we've used clear enamel here at Conway Stewart. It was an interesting story. Mary and I are on the phone looking at prototypes, and she's saying to me, well, you know, this clear looks okay. The picture looks all right. Maybe we want to try one. And to me, it turned out to be my favorite. So it's been, this is, the, this, this, uh, out, this way of going through design is really interesting. you got to keep trying things. Just so I understand correctly, to come up with a new idea for a design hall that one way to it, and you and Mary put your heads together and say, oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, that doesn't really throw yeah. me. Well, I'm going to shake your hand again because I really like that. <laughs> I really like This is the man who helps design. Or, yeah, yeah. That's my job. Yeah, that's that's, that's my job. job. Yes, I'll take that one. Okay, very Except good. I need it as a fountain. Yeah, I understand. Thank and you that, very much. And that we can fix. Thank you. FP Geeks at the 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show with, look who I found. Mr. Brian Gray. How, How are you doing? Today? Good to see you, my well, friend. I have to speak up because that, you know, I'll, like on that. I'll be happy to. Today's Sunday, the big day, you're ready for the big crowd? Yes. You can see there's a line over there already if you want to pan over there. The line is already, like, how large now? And there's still a half hour to get in. The line. Have you sold out all your pens already? No. Can you show us a couple? If we did sell them all, I wouldn't be here. I'd be on a plane to Hawaii. But plane to Hawaii? Yeah. So pan down his pens here. Let's see what we got. Probably the, the, the biggest thing that we have, or the newest development here, has been the pneumatic filler. And this is the demonstrator. I think a lot of people may have seen this in my introductory video. But uh, for those that are not aware, there's this sack inside that, of course, your ink goes into. And we found an interesting way to compress that sack. And that when you unscrew the blind cap and pull it back, cover this hole with your finger and push in, that creates pressure or compression. And that makes that sack collapse. So let's see if you can see this sack collapsing here. Quite easily. And if I go all the way like that, then you see that's how you actually fill the pen. When you remove your finger, that's when the pressure releases and all the ink gets sucked up. So if I'm filling it this way, if this is in an ink well, and I push down, that sack pushes all the air out, or the pressure pushes all the air out, then when I release my finger, all the ink gets sucked up into the into the sack. Fantastic. So that, are these selling yep, well? They are. That's just about all that we've sold so far like at the show. Cakes, yeah. So from here down to here are all these pneumatic fillers. We have bulb fillers here. These are our overlay pens. And then everything else going all the way down the line are generally going to be cartridge converter pens. It's been a very successful show so far. It's not even Sunday. Today's the big day. And today's the big day. Thank you, Eric. I'll stop by Appreciate that. it. Take care, buddy. 
Kong Pendik at the Los Angeles International Pen Show. And here behind Pendleton Brown. So we're just going to watch him work a little bit. Oh, watch me while I work. Oh, watch me while I work. Hi, folks. We are doing a nice 146 here, making, uh, taking uh, the oblique out and making a nice crisp metallic stub out of it. So that's what we're up to today. Fantastic. At the moment. And somebody's going to be really happy with this because these things turn out great. Man, you look big, Eric. Thank you, sir. Man. Bigger than life. <laughs> That's looking pretty darn good. Do we have success, sir? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Thank very, you. very much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Don Penn Geeks at the 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show. I'm here at the Anderson's Four Tables, Kelton Four, and they really need a fifth because all the stuff they brought does not fit on four tables. Lisa, hello again. We Good just morning. spoke yesterday. I know. It's like we're living together. Um, <laughs> why don't you show us what you... Let's start over here. Come this way. And just show the inventory of inks that they have. And then we can start talking in the microphone. We're actually quite low on ink. We've sold a bunch of it. Uh, not that many people have it, so it's been a popular choice. Yeah, they'll fly over. And now we're coming to the modern pens of your collections. Edison at the top. We've got some Schaefer. We've got your uh, really fun and funky colored Ahabs. We've got the Pilot Metropolitans. Pilot and Metropolitans the are Platinum Mazoo. Do I note that all of the new ink bottles from Tuesday are gone? Correct. Did you not save one for me? Because I didn't ask for one. No, so, oh, no we didn't. I missed out on. I was trying to get Philip to deliver them for me. Okay. Down here we have more Twisties. Schaefer, uh, Vibrant, Fun, and Modern. Also known as BFM. Months. Look who I ran into over oh. here. Mr. <laughs> Brian Anderson himself. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. How's Sunday going for you? Uh, excellent so far. Good, 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 good. We're just going to take a tour of your vintage. Okay. Now, which, of course, you had to talk us through. All right, what do you want to know? Uh, they're arranged in some fashion. Like, uh, less expensive than most, or Estabrooks uh, over here, or? Schaefer's, uh, Hard Rubber, uh, Parker's, uh, Wall Eversharps, some Relief, and then pretty much Estabrooks. And, and these colorful Estabrooks, especially like those pink ones there, what are they? Yes. Are they purse pens? Uh, those are the pastel purse pens. Pastel purse pens. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Um, Where's the hard rubber again? Uh, we have some hard rubber down here with you know, various it brands. It seems to me that Lisa Anderson makes fun of you for like entire pen. Yes, she does. Do you sell some of this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she makes it sound like you're holding the whole thing. No, no, no. Um, we do sell some, absolutely. And how, how has Thursday, Friday, Saturday been for you? Uh, excellent. Really well. Uh, vintage, not so much, but uh, yeah. modern pens and the paper. And the Sunday's going to be even a better day? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't we go take a look at the paper products they brought and the pen cases? Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Um, proper pads over here? Yes. Vodia? Yep. Uh, Got some Bovadis, Execlair. And no more blue leather in a pen case? Uh, there actually, we, we did find a small stash that is probably at our house right now. Cool. Uh, very small. And this is, these, I love these. Uh, Exacompta, very nice uh, index cards. I have only ever seen them in like four by six huge size. Here they are, three by five. I'm gonna have to take some of that home. I'm leaving here with that camera. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a very good day. Fountain Pen Geeks at the 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show. I'm here with Carmen Rivera, 
who is, as everybody knows, the world's foremost authority on banishing point fountain and tower. I'm doing great. I'm out of Pencho, right? So. <laughs> it could be better. Yeah. You're going to give us a little tour of the vanishing points that you brought? Because I have my eye on this one. Yes. Uh, yes. The, these are all limited editions here. So we have uh, we have purple. I, you know, I'm sorry. I don't have the official names right. down. Yeah, but, but it looks like purple to me. It's purple, yes. Yeah. So and this is the mandarin yellow. This is vivid red. Uh, we have the pink, the ice, uh, green ice, and uh, orange, orange crush, crush yes, yeah. and blue ice, uh, ice blue, sorry. So these were the limited editions they put out, basically, the, the number of pens they produced is based on the, the year it's re released. Yes, okay. exactly. So um, this one uh, was the first, the, van uh, the mandarin yellow was the first one produced. And extremely popular and difficult to come by. Exactly, right. Um, this one is interesting that, uh, I, I don't know if, you'll, if you've noticed before, that um, the, the current uh, limited editions will say limited edition in the back right here, but the first one they didn't do that. Uh, it's just like the normal modern vanishing, vanishing point. point. Say, um, and it didn't come in a fancy box oh, so this or was, they case. They didn't plan it out well. They didn't know this yes. was going to be a trend. Right, exactly. Well, it was such a successful thing for them that uh, after that, uh, you know, they started producing right. limited editions. So the most popular, difficult to get, is the Mandarin Yellow, right. followed by Orange Crush. I, I, be I believe so. The Orange Crush. Uh, the Red Carbonesque is also uh, one that's difficult to get. Um, do you have any of the vintage faceted, the ones that say Namiki on them? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any of those right now. So if somebody was just starting a Vanishing Point collection, what would you tell them to concentrate on? Because you, you can't just say, I, mean, I want everyone ever made. Right. Even if you get there someday, what yeah. would you start with? I would start with uh, the faceted Vanishing faceted. Point. So yeah, the now, one you just told me you don't have. I'm sorry. Uh, I do have, but this is a parts pin, okay, so yeah, I'm sorry, so that, yeah, it's a parts pin, but yes. Uh, so the, this is the uh, faceted vanishing point. Um, it's uh, made out of plastic, uh, and it was very, very popular. It had a, a, a good run of, uh, I can't remember the number of years, but... Um, uh, this was early 90s, then? Yes, early, early 90s. 90s. Uh, until 1999, I think is okay. what it was. When, uh, and is this it, one that says Namiki on the clip? And this one does not say Namiki, this one says Pilot on the okay. clip. Because yeah. my particular, when I started, the, I just wanted the ones that said Namiki on the clip. Oh, really? So that was like a four-year period, so I figured yes. that was something I could actually accomplish. Right, right, yes. Um, but yes, many people want just the faceted one. Right. Because they fit nicely in they, their hand. They do fit nicely, and, the, and, the, and just, yeah, the, the faceted barrel does make it comfortable. Uh, and then after after this, they started with uh, the modern, larger size uh, vanishing point. Um, and this was popular as well. Um, this and it's still in production. Um, and in lots of colors. And lots of colors, right? Uh, chrome, slate, blue, black, red. Uh, the tr uh, two uh, different trim colors, gold. Um, and this uh, rhodium plated. Um, there is a vanishing point that doesn't have a push button, isn't there? Oh, that's right. Uh, a twist barrel. <laughs> twist uh, barrel. Yes. But they still call it a vanishing point. Uh, they do. Because the point vanishes. Right, exactly. It's marketing. <laughs> do you have a twist barrel? Not here. Okay. <laughs> Are they popular? Because um, I really like that button. Yes. Yeah, they're not it's quite so as popular as, as the push button. Yeah, yeah. Were they are they still being made, or was that a specific? Yes, uh, they're still being made. Still being made. Yes, and then uh, they reduced the size of this uh, uh, a few years ago. They started producing the Decimo, which is a, a thinner model, uh, similar to this size barrel. Uh, not as much girth on the Decimo. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Because those are kind of fat. <laughs> they are when kind of fat. When you're used to these, they feel much <laughs> much wider in your hand. They do. Yeah. I didn't realize the decimal yes. was a thinner version. Right, right. Exactly. Are the decimals popular? Uh, they are popular, actually. Yeah, and they have a, a variety. They come in a variety of colors as well, different than the the larger uh, barrels. What got you started with vanishing points? Because the world knows you as Ms. Vanishing Point. Uh, you know, I did research online, uh, and I wanted to find uh, a, a a fountain pen. Uh, that didn't cost a lot of money, basically. What's and the price on this? <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
And, well, back in the day. Back in the, yes, but when this was released, it was... $250, yeah. yeah. But now it's yeah. $500. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and, I, uh, and I read this glowing review about these pins, and I went to the pen store, and uh, I got to try it, and I immediately fell in love. I love the idea of a push-button fountain pen. You know, don't, don't have to worry about a, a cap. It's extremely Pilot, they're known for their, uh, uh, for their quality uh, pens, and their nibs. They're great writers. <laughs> Keep talking. Keep talking. They're wonderful writers, and so... Um, and what's great, what's the uh, other great thing about uh, these pens is that uh, you can uh, exchange the nibs easily, very easily. You can... They pull out the whole unit kind Yes, of right. So, let's, let's, let's find one with a nib in it. This one doesn't. This one has a nib. When the camera comes back up, we'll pull a nib out. Yeah. All right. A, so, a demonstration, please. Very, very simple. All you have to do is twist the barrel and out pops the nib. And so uh, they make them in fine, medium, and broad. And uh, you can either use uh, a converter, or it also comes with it's uh, a pipe here, an inner pipe, uh, which you use cartridge. for a cartridge, okay. exactly. Yeah, I use the converter. They do not hold a whole lot of ink. They don't, but um, they're so easy to fill. Yeah. Um, and, so if uh, I want a different nib, I have to trade out the whole, the whole system. Well, yes. I mean, you can, you know. This is this is this the is nib you, unit. Yes, exactly. You don't just take the nib out. No, that's, that's a, the nib unit that you would exchange out the whole unit. Yeah, very, very simple. Very to convenient use. and easy to uh, so you, reassemble. You got into vanishing points because you really liked them. <laughs> yes. That's the best reason yes. to get into any kind of thing yes. is because you really like them. Yeah. I was just going to sweep over your other stuff because you're not right. just vanishing points. <laughs> I'm making no. a big deal about vanishing points, but you're not just vanishing yeah. points. And when the camera comes back up here, we get to say goodbye. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Oh, very much. Appreciate it. Have a great day today. Thank you. You're about you to, you know, release the house. I know, right? Get ready for fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> fun Pen Geeks at the 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show. I am here with Sarge. Sarge, how are you? I'm very well, Eric. Happy to see you. To you. Just so everybody finally gets an idea of why we call you the one man pen show. Okay. Let's do a little slow flyover of all the pens you got. So do you want me to give you a little bit of a yeah, commentary? As we go, oh, what have we got here? Okay, so this side of the table is, is my vintage pens. A lot of, uh, I focus on vintage Schaefer's and Parker's. These are all English UFOs, quite rare. Oversized balances. Moving on to other Parker's, some 51's, some, some more Schaefer's. And then I'm moving to more American pens with Wild Ever Sharp, Waterman, and then some uh, Conklin, uh, some English pens, you know, Notos and Swans, and right across to a little bit of a mixture there. And here I have a, a, a very good representative uh, selection of uh, pocket Vacumatics, right from the senior size, oversized Maximus, right to the Majors, the Lockdown Standards, and some of the third generation pens as Shadowways. And here we have some very, very, very high-end vintage pens. We have grey marble, those oversized with red and yellow, perfect lapis. Nice, uh, it's a 14 and 18 carat small piece out there. Shape of PFMs, American classic. Here we have Miriam to now into our modern pens. And here we have uh, a number of very high-end limited editions, Tibaldi's, Parker's, Schaefer's. The whole range there, these are probably the pricier pens. Have we moved to somebody else's table? No, this is my table. Still your table. Yeah, yeah, so this is a uh, vintage now moving into modern. Here we have um, some of the more interesting Mackie E pens. Dan's pen right there? That is uh, a version of Dan's pen. Dan's had a stub nib. This one only has, a, I reckon, a regular fine. I'm sure he wouldn't want it. But no, I'm sure we could exchange a nib if he wanted it. So. So, um, and here we have uh, some of the larger, oversized, limited edition Mondrian Viscontin plates. And then moving on to a small case of Pocket 75s, some cross pens, people like these, some modern pens. And then we're into the Italian celluloids, where we have um, Omas Tibaldi, and we also have some Conway Stewart. The back case there, we have a number of uh, Omas. Um, 
we don't have any Sonic games. Sonic no, I don't. But I have seen Sonic games. Yes, absolutely, yeah. You don't Exactly. And then right on this last tray we have Aurora, um, we have some Pelicans and more Morgans for the Mines, some more Pelicans, uh, some Bessies, and some Parker Geophores. And there's a couple of cases I haven't been able to get out, but there you go. Thank you very much. Do with more tables. We're about to open the doors. So yeah. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Nice to talk to you. Hi, all. Eric Schneider at Big Geeks, 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show. I am here with Ryan Prusay. Yes. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine, you, sir. Very well. Very nice. Thank you very much. You're going to show us your pen. Yes. Your pen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What do you got? I have got, let's start with uh, this section right here, because this is my introductory offer where I want people to get to know me. I'm calling this case my show specials, relatively inexpensive, rare and exotic woods from around the world, magnetic caps, these are a lot of fun. They click on the back, you click on the front. You could show us a fountain pen. Yes, I could. Yes. This was just luck of the draw. It happened to be unlucky in that it was a rollerball. But, here we go, fountain pen. Do I hear a magnetic cap on that? You do hear a magnetic oh. cap. Very Perfect nice. for driving your colleagues nuts at work if you wanted to. It's just so much fun you can't stop once you start. Can you name any of these woods? I can name all of these woods. How quickly can you name all these woods? Okay, we have Kingwood, Cherry Burl, Tasmanian Eucalyptus, Redwood Burl, Cocoa Bolo, Spalted Oak Burl, Koa, Kingwood, Bird's Eye Maple, Zebra Wood, Curly Mahogany, and Olive Wood. That's enough? That was Kingwood? Kingwood. I like the Kingwood. The Kingwood is a subspecies of Rosewood. Really? Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, did you say that any of this wood was from Madagascar? Um, there is, actually, I don't use any wood from Madagascar because Madagascar woods are mostly illegal. And it oh, see, I didn't know treaties. I didn't. And anything I else you want to show us? Sure. This case right here um, are some of my more special items. The um, Here I have Macassar ebony, which is not, a lot of people call it Madagascar ebony, but that's not true. Not true. No, it is not because true. Because it would be illegal. Right. Um, Macassar ebony is one of many species of ebony. Is that from Ireland? Macassar? Um, no, actually it's from Africa. Okay. Africa, indeed. Uh, so here we have uh, things with inlay. Poa abalone inlay, 18K nib. This particular one here is a limited edition of 88. It has a solid 18K nib. It comes in either fine or medium, you choose. And you did all the inlay work on the wood. Yes. And the wood in this particular instance is African blackwood, which is a species of rosewood. A species of rosewood? Yes. Can you do that one more time? Can you name the woods? I can. I have naturally said elk antler. Elk antler. What kind of wood is that? Uh, it's right, not continue. a wood. I'm kidding you. <laughs> I have gaboon ebony with Honduras rosewood. Gaboon? Burl. Gaboon. Gaboon ebony. Gaboon ebony. Actually, here's a raw block of gaboon ebony. This comes from Cameroon. I made my sign out of it. So, this is the raw wood from whence this came. From whence this came. You're just buying time to remember the name of all these woods. I am not. Spalted oak rose, zebra wood. This is actually a rare stone from Madagascar, not wood, stone. Not even petrified wood yet? No, no, okay. not even petrified. It's called labradorite. And if you can, me. If you can catch the light on it just right, you'll see, I don't know if you can catch this on the camera or not, but you'll see the flare and the reflection off the stone. That's very intense. There's a cabochon in the top of labradorite with little ebony cuffs, and it has um, African blackwood cap. And nice ring, by the way. Thank you. I bought that here. Did you now? I did. We have Macassar ebony with Mad uh, with the uh, stone from Madagascar in the top called oh, Labradorite. So there is something Madagascarian. Yeah, yes. In their case. Okay. Yes. Another one the same. We have African blackwood. We have more African blackwood. We have gaboon ebony with uh, ah, gaboon ebony. Yes. Okay. Now these look fancy. What are these? These are fancy. This is my uh, original artwork, scrimshaw into naturally shed elk antler. Very this is my Dangers of the Deep collection. Dangers of the Deep. Yes, things dangerous from the ocean. Okay. And things that I like from the ocean. We have a ship caught in a tempest. The artwork is uh, designed to uh, be a seamless landscape, or in this case a seascape, all the way around the circumference of the pen. They're all limited editions of 150. So the first one was the pattern of the ship. Is that a self-portrait? You know, actually it is. Okay. But I had to change. I wasn't. No, I recognize it. I recognize okay. It. But actually, it's Blackbeard. So here we have Blackbeard ship. We have the uh, Jolly Roger on the back, and we have Blackbeard on the front, replete with the uh, lit fuses in his hair to make himself a little bit more intimidating. Very nice. He blockaded the port of Charleston way back when, and it was just a general terror. We have the sirens from the Odyssey. 
My wife had a, a message three from our cameraman. He's trying to tell us what? Okay. We have the Folly Beach Lighthouse in Charleston, South Carolina, which itself is not a danger of the deep, but a warning of the danger of the deep. Oh, this is true. Yes. Or the shallow. Or the shallow. Is, yeah, the danger of the shallow. In indeed. We should pan all these because they're beautiful. Okay. These we have some rare woods. Um, this actually is a new find for me. This is desert ironwood burl. Desert ironwood comes from Arizona. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I sold all of the fountain pens. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Did you bring two? Uh, no, well, I brought, More like, than two. Okay. I brought like seven and they were gone very quickly. Oh, really? right. What you're looking at here is an intersection of the heartwood, which is dark, and the sapwood, which is light. The, as the tree grows, the wood in the core darkens uh, as the nutrients are absorbed. The outside is the new growth, and it doesn't develop and mature with color until much later. So if you take the wood from the right portion of the tree, you get this wonderful effect. And it's gorgeous. Thank you. Although these I can't... are my favorite shapes. These are really fun. This is a Honduras rosewood burl. And here again, you see the heartwood with the sapwood. Can you do it in that wood? I can do it in okay. that wood. I would be happy to. Does this particular model have a name? You know, I need to do a better job at uh, naming For now, my we'll call it the Mina. The Mina. You know, it's done. <laughs> that's, that's Edison's pen. Oh, is it? <laughs> I don't know. No, um, and this is your first time at the LA Pen Show? It is the first time at the LA Pen Show. And today is the public day, so you're ready for the Madhouse? I sure hope so. I need the Madhouse. It's nice to have you in California. Thank, Thank you, Eric. Thank you for uh, having me. Ben Geeks, 25th Annual Los Angeles International Pen Show. I am here with my very good friend, Mary Burke, Conway Stewart herself. How are you? Good to meet you. So good, to meet you. <laughs> good to meet you. Good to meet you. <laughs> what pens are you going to show us? Well, we bought several pens at the pen show, but we also bring prototypes, which we are going to release in the next few months. These are two prototypes? Yes. Okay. So this is a brand new pen that's going to be launched in the next couple of months. It's going to be called the Laurel. The Laurel? It will be released in an edition of 100 pieces, and it's hand-applied enamel. And the person who actually makes our enamel pens, or actually paints our enamel pens, he also enamels the dashboards of Rolls Royce in traditional The same cars. person, one single person, does all the dashboards for Rolls Royce, also does the enamel work for Conway Stewart pens. We only use the best of the best. Apparently so. And of course he's English. <laughs> of course he's English. <laughs> Well, it's very important for Conway Street that we use English craftsmanship because we're all about an English company. No, I and it's absolutely stunning. I, I'm sure we got really good shots with the camera, but in real life it's even more stunning, I'm sure, than what the camera is showing. When will this be available? About three months. Three months. That one also catches it. It looks like it's sterling silver, but it's not very shiny. Yep. We're actually using a form of Tiffany polish. Did I really just catch you on camera saying, yep? Oh dear. <laughs> it might become an Americanized. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore what we do is, it's, it's harder to make this pen in sterling silver because it's hand polished and we have to make sure it's complete matte finish and the matte finish to be even. So, so it there's is no sterling shiny st pieces. silver and yes. it's, it's polished in a way that makes it a matte instead of shiny. Even Every the piece. section. Yep. Everything. Couldn't and the do engraving. it on threads though. No, because the threads will always be cutting in and cutting out. Okay. Again. So the other thing is that we actually engrave in this paint design in-house as well. And then the engraving, the, the lines of the engraving become shiny. Yes, because what happens when you do the polishing, po Tiffany polishing, it's all surface. What you're seeing on the shining is a reflection, is the actual light that's cut, that's bouncing off the engraved sterling silver cut deep into the barrels and on the cap. And Stunning. we even polish a uh, Tiffany polished a clip. So are you, you're saying that the woman who does this matte polishing, her name is Tiffany? <laughs> we can't tell you trade secrets. I can't tell you trade secrets. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning in that I don't believe I've ever seen sterling silver polished matte finish. It's a complete reverse psychology. Yes. Because normally when you get silver, you're always polishing it to make it shiny because you want that bling to go so through. So I can't polish this pen? You cannot polish it because of the way it's You might it's make it shiny. Polished. No, you can't. Oh, you can't. it's the impossible it. is what yes. you're saying. Yes, yes. I can polish it. Well, you can it try. It just won't work. <laughs> Excellent. When will this be available? That'll be available in three to four months. Is it limited edition? Yes, 100 pieces. 100 pieces. And do we know? Because it feels like four kilos. 
Yeah, because it's all sterling silver. Do we know how much it's worth? Because it's obviously not. Worth. No, but I can email you the information. Oh, right. I'm guessing 110 grand. That's what I'm guessing. You're okay. We'll, we'll see how okay, well. Okay, but if you're right, then I'll give you a price. No, Patricia. Thank you very much. I'll give those back to you. Okay. Always nice to see you. They've already opened the doors. In the I know. We've got so these people waiting. All the people are waiting to get into this booth, and I'm taking up their time. So thank you very much. Pleasure. See you later. Bye. Indulge in the